Hampton. <laughs> um, and I'm here to talk to you about the future of SaaS. Um, how many people here use SaaS? Hi. Um, nice to meet you all. Um, yeah, so I uh, created SaaS four something years ago, four or five years ago. Um, I kind of did the initial stuff, we'll get into more of that. Um, and so I decided, it's been, I think it's been four years since I talked at a RailsConf. And like, so this is, I, I feel really good being back. Like, I'm back with my people, you know? Like, finally a crowd I understand. Um, like, uh, and so I kind of wanted to start off with just a real quick, like, where I've been. Just like a quick little update, because I love talking about me, and I know you love hearing about me. Um, so this was <laughs> something that Ryan Carson said to me. Uh, he's like, you used to do all this cool stuff before, then you disappeared. And I realized I kind of stopped talking about what I was doing. Like, I stopped blogging, and I was just doing stuff. But I didn't actually tell anyone. Um, so yeah, I was like, that's why I'm doing this section, because I'm like, I want Rails people. I want you guys to know what's been up. Um, and the simple first answer is burnout. Uh, I worked at a, a consultancy called Unspace in Toronto, which, uh, despite what uh, DHH keeps saying, I'm not Canadian. Uh, I wish I was, maybe. Uh, no, I'm an American, um, but I was living in Canada, so whatever. Uh, yeah, SaaS was invented in Canada. But uh, yeah, I was working for like a boutique consultancy called Unspace, and you know we did really great work. I was really proud of what we did there. I worked super hard. Um, but what kind of happened was these people would keep coming in, with, you know, they come with an okay idea, like people with too much money, and they're just like, hey, I should do this whole web thing. And we'd come in, take the idea, and I'd, I'd put my heart into it. I'd make it into something I was really proud of. I'm like, this is awesome. Like, you no, know, you're gonna make so much money doing this. Just do this and this, and you know, come with a whole plan, and build it, and like, spend three or four months of my life on it. And then, inevitably, what kept happening, besides only two clients, I think, they just kind of, they failed at it. Like, they kind of gave up, or, didn't actually go through with it, or only kept it up for a couple of months and didn't go you know, talk, or get any groups, or do any marketing, or even blog, or any of the basic things that we would just assume you'd do. And it's amazing how fast that can kill something. Like even something that's kind of good, just nobody ever goes to the site. You don't tell anyone about it. You know, I'd try to tweet, but that'd be it. So yeah, I just, you know, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Like I was like, I have to make something myself. And I think that's a very common theme you hear with people who do consulting. At the end, you're just like, okay is my turn to see if, if I can do this. Um, so a friend asked me, uh, like, I just overheard them go, I actually didn't even have an iPhone, and they were like, oh, I wish I could like view Wikipedia on my iPhone. So I made this, I, iPedia or iWik, depending on its version. Um, this is like what I did as I kind of like stopped <laughs> being part of the Rails world. Um, and, uh, you know, it, was, it had ads on the top. Um, and it's, it sold really well. It was the first Wikipedia app out there. Um, you know, it's not perfect, but I was pretty proud of it. Um, got really popular, a crap ton of downloads. I don't know the exact number, but it is the unit of crap tons. Um, the problem was that this was, it was called iWIC, the Wikipedia Encyclopedia. Uh, a little problem, the W is copyright, and you can't really say Wiki plus Encyclopedia without you start to do some trademark infringement. So I got a call from uh, Mike Godwin, who's the uh, legal counsel for uh, the Wikimedia Foundation that runs Wikipedia, and uh, of Godwin's Law, by the way, in case anybody's familiar with that. Um, yeah, but he called me up and uh, was like, hey, you know, this isn't cool, but would you mind changing it? And these are the things. And I was like, uh, yeah, I'll change it, but uh, like, do you guys want an app? Um, so as it turns out, I think I'm the only software, like only software ever written that was acquired by Wikimedia. I definitely think I get the only. They actually kind of bought it and bought me. Um, yeah, and I don't definitely don't think that's happened before or since. So this it kind of it, I got even more W's in the corner. I was like, yeah, we're, we're official now. Um, and this went through a bunch of versions. I assume you guys have seen it. I'm not responsible for the most recent one. It's not getting great feedback. Um, the one right before was the the one I built. Um, it's true. Go look in the store, it's really done. Um, no, but I love those guys. They're working really hard and they're fantastic. <laughs> After I insult them publicly. Um, but the real thing I was doing while I was there, there was the app, but then there was the mobile site. And that was really the heart of what I was doing. Um, so if anybody has drunkenly looked up a fact on their iPhone and seen the mobile site, yeah, that was team of one doing that. So I kind of disappeared, but I showed up while you were drunkest. It's a bit like being the Hampton Ferry floating in and, 
you know, you didn't even know I was there. Uh, <laughs> there were two sets of uh, tracks in the sand. Um, I was one. Uh, whatever. Um, anyhow, so still being offensive. Uh, it was written in Merb, uh, and uh, yeah, it just recently. It's still the same product. It got ported about six months ago to PHP. Don't ask. Um, but 1.8 billion monthly page views. Uh, so I'm pretty proud of that. Um, yeah, I think when it switched for movies, it was about 900, and it wasn't for performance reasons. It was political, um, which sucks. Uh, but also, I did this. Sorry, I'm go I'll move faster through this. Dictionary. I, I don't know if this is one of the things I'm most proud of. If you don't have this app, get it. It's free. Um, but it's on different platforms with the iPhone one. Like, it was with the iPhone 3GS, and I wanted to have an on-phone dictionary. So, and it had to fit in, the, I think it was 10 megabytes at the time, and also had a terrible processor and SQLite with indexes I couldn't really use. So, it, but it's search as you type and with sound-alike algorithms. So you can misspell words and it will figure it out for you, which was super ridiculously hard. I spent like a month just tweaking the algorithm so the user experience was awesome. Uh, you can see the same user experience now on your iPhone 4S, but the processor is crazy fast, and so all that hard work would have just been easy now. Um, anyhow, so a whole bunch of people in that. Did some more stuff, a uh, app with white cats um, called Color Puzzle. And then I kind of got bored of just doing my own stuff. And basically now I'm at MoveWeb. Um, I'm the director of engineering there and kind of oversee our platform development. Um, basically we kind of take mo uh, regular websites and make them mobile. Um, and we try to do it in a way that doesn't uh, suck. Uh, as the, I think the woman who presented earlier this morning on all the bad sites, none of those are like ours. We, we, do, do, <laughs> we do good ones. Um, we're kind of stealth though. Um, ish on our technology. Maybe you'll be hearing about this later. Um, some other point, but yeah, we're about half a billion page views through our cluster, and um, yeah, we went from, oh sorry, the important part, not funded, completely bootstrapped, two years ago, four people, today, 43, um, and we're profitable. So yeah, it's pretty awesome. We've been growing like crazy. I know, right? It's like, it, it feels so good to say that. It's like, yeah, we didn't take a dime. Um, it's all, yeah, but hiring is a little stressful, <laughs> like, because you're like, do we really need this person? Um, but you come out with something good. Um, all right, back to the SAS at hand. Um, I'm a great joke, I think so. Um, since kind of at that point, I broke off from working on SAS or Hamel, and you guys probably know these fellows, uh, Nathan and Chris, who, like, the amount of awesome I can say about them, I, I just can't, like, they have really run the project, they've owned the project, they've made it what it is today. Um, if I had been running it, it probably would have ended up like uh, less or something. Um, not not very well polished. Um, that's my insulting thing to less. Um, no, but like they they really brought all these extra features. Kind of when I left, it was like all I wanted was nesting and variables, and like maybe some functions and mixins, like the most basic. Probably the way I think a lot of people use it, or like me. But they really gone, and the thing is just deep. You know, you can go full into it as a language, and there's all this craziness. Um, and then. I want to clear up a couple things about SAS real quick. Uh, SCSS, yeah, this is maybe contentious with people. It's the extension to SAS files now. That's the way we're terming this. Um, indented SAS is, will remain supported, but the brand confusion on what's SCSS, what's SAS, SCSS has really taken off. People really like it. New users, you know, as much as I'm like, hey, just learn it, you know, they really connect with it. And so, you know, even at MoveWeb, we use SCSS. I know Chris uses SCSS. Um, so we're kind of going with that. So now it's really just the extension to SAS files. As a matter of fact, uh, the book, uh, Pragmatic Guide to SAS by Michael Catlin and Hampton Catlin, on, available now for purchase. Uh, we only talk about, like, we don't really cover indented SAS, um, which was a thing I made for myself, but other people, you know, it kind of put, throws people off. So anyhow, that's just to, set, to settle that. Um, and it's SAS, not SAS. Please don't do this. It looks like you're screaming. It's a backronym, not an acronym, okay? I just thought SAS was a funny sounding name, so I went with that. Um, and everybody now, just when I see that, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It looks like something made by a committee when it's all in letters or something, right? Um, yeah, so what I'm gonna talk about now is SAS 3.2. Um, and SAS 3.2 ha has been all Chris and Nathan's work. I'm not claiming. I helped with any of this. Um, but I'm, here gonna, I'm still gonna tell you about it. Um, yeah, so this has actually been a release long time in coming. Uh, it polishes off a lot of corners and it should be out in the next couple weeks. So we're gonna go through a couple of things that are coming into SAS uh, 
in the future. Um, placeholder selectors. Um, so this, there's been a lot of um, requests with, wait, who here uses at extend? Okay, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's definitely a ninja tool, um, and this kind of gives you a little insight into it. Um, it's really, really awesome. It's really worth looking into. Chris, when he usually does his talks, it's all about these kind of features. And I'll be honest, I mean, I use this a little bit, um, but I don't write that much SAS anymore. I mean, I'm not doing a lot of front end work. Uh, I'm mostly just coming into other people's code. But this stuff's really, really powerful. But basically, when you define a class, you can kind of use that class later and say that it really inherits from those selectors. So it's kind of like, I think of it like mix-ins, but you also bring along the selectors. Um, and one of the problems is, it, like, let's say you want to make a reusable class that you're going to extend somewhere else. Well, it would always print out, like the normal thing is it would print out that selector that you never actually used on your page. So by putting in, uh, sorry, so the proposal had been at silent, that you could do at silent, put a selector and it would never print out. Um, so instead, if you put a percent in your selector, uh, that, will, that first bit will never actually print out itself. But what you've just done is you declared a placeholder selector. And later, anywhere else in your file, you can use it. So libraries and stuff can define these. So here, I take dot highlight and I extend with a strong link. And then all of a sudden, see how it kind of places itself into that spot? Um, the logic to get that done and it extends is mind blowing. Because you're really, there's a lot of math about selectors and it'll do even crazy stuff. Like this is a simple example, you could just put it in place, but sometimes when there's a comma and you're doing multiple selectors or conditional selectors and it all kind of works, uh, which is pretty awesome. So that's the thing that's going in. Um, this is the one I'm really excited about, mix-in content. Uh, I also call it blocks for mix-ins, which will make sense to Ruby people. Um, so here's the example, and I, this is actually, a, I, I would totally will use this as soon as this is out. Um, mix-in iPhone, then I have a media query inside that mix-in, and then I kind of define some stuff. And then I say, at content. And that's basically the yield, um, right? So it's saying, oh, right here, put anything you pass me. So then when I use at include iPhone, down below, this is where I'm actually going to print stuff out. Um, and then I say, body color red. So I passed in those select, or sorry, those attributes into the mix, in which had never been possible before. You just call them, and that's it. And then, look what happens, at media only screen. And then kind of nested inside that is this body. So and. Going further, where this gets really useful is we now support what I call at media craziness. Um, I'm sure every, a lot of people here have hit this. At media is not perfectly taken care of in SAS 3.1 and before. It kind of, like you can do simple ones, but it, you can't combine them. They can only, I think they can only be on the root. Like there's all sorts of not goodness about it. We kind of, like basically this is a huge push. Almost every, you can nest at media queries and it will join them with an and. Uh, you can use, you could call at iPhone somewhere deep in your code, and it will just kind of go back to the top level and place at medias around it. Um, so it's really nice. Um, this will really help with responsive design stuff. Um, this is a feature I like, load paths. It's pretty simple. Seems like it should have been there before. Um, variously, they're also called include paths. But you can actually set an environment variable and say, hey, add this, kind of using the colon normal Unix style. You can say, hey, this folder, search here also for SCSS files. So if you have like a little snippet of, or like a little repository of your secret tricks and stuff and you're compiling locally, you can do that. Um, so it's kind of cool. And this is what Compass is going to use in the future because um, you just, it's a load path instead of a special case. Um, and then some deprecations. Uh, 187 is now the minimum Ruby version, but if you're using 186, that's the look I give you. Um, I, uh, ampersand foo is gone, I don't know. Ampersand's a really cool thing. It used to be what we'd kind of do to get around not having add extends when you want to do some kind of ninja, put these two together in a different way. Um, but you, now you have to have a space. Um, and that's because doing the ampersand, it got really confusing in the edge cases. Like do you actually insert the previous selector in there, anyhow, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't work that way anymore. It's only the simple case. Use add extends, that's much cleaner way. It's got all the proper logic behind it. It will behave in a repeatable and understandable way. Um, thanks for watching. No. Oh, I, I was trolling you. Um, <laughs> we actually are announcing something. Sorry. All right. 
Um, so a couple things, just to start. Some pros and cons of SaaS first alternatives. Um, number one, mature, like way older than any of the other ones. And with that, bug fixes and edge cases are pretty much taken care of. You don't really deal with them. Um, and these are all the good things. Advanced. You can do, like I was saying with it extends, all the, there's very few situations where we're like, no, that's impossible. Um, Chris Epstein makes sure that you, like, he's the most advanced user ever, and like, he's thought through all of this. So there's an answer. Um, maybe some of our competitors have lots of, we don't handle that, uh, is a response. Um, and so that's things like full unit support, um, and if you can, if anybody gives suggestions on how to deal with units, we'll take them if we can make it work better. Um, we have tons of functions, selector inheritance, which is the same as that extends. Uh, I mean, and tons more. Um, once again, see Chris Epstein talk. <laughs> he will brief you on all of it. Um, but here's the downsides. Accessibility. Yes, Ruby is installed on a stock Mac, um, but getting a designer to go into the command line and type that stuff in, it's kind of a big step for them. Also, if you're a designer and you're used to working with a framework, we do have the GUIs, but those are kind of also you have to go kind of set up stuff on the side, and a lot of people are kind of not into that. You're like, you have to go, if your de designer uses it, you have to go to the developer who's, you know, using whatever technology to, uh, to go do it. And this is, this is where Les really won when they went to JavaScript, right? Drop it in the page. You don't need anything. If you've got a browser, you can compile. Um, so they really kicked ass with that. And then speed. Uh, speed's a pretty big issue uh, if you're a really advanced user. Wait, oh, here's a good question. Who here thinks speed's an issue in SaaS? Who's to that point? Okay, all right, so the rest of you have pretty small projects. Because <laughs> at MoveWeb, uh, between our, we have a ton of projects, but like about 50,000 lines of SaaS. I think caring.com or Chris's has, probably has that on their one rail site. Um, so the average project that we have is about 30 seconds to compile. Caching helps with this stuff if you have it set up right, but if you push to Heroku or whatever and your asset pipeline's a little off, then it takes this, or longer. Some of our projects take about two minutes to compile, uh, which is just unacceptable, like completely. Um, so that's why I'm proud to announce SAS.js. No, I'm trolling you, I'm totally trolling you. <laughs> Hell no, they already got that. They already got that. I'm so yeah, no, we're, we're not doing that noise. Um, it's even crazier than that. Um, so how can we get it fast and accessible? What's the language that you can compile anywhere? LibSAS. Like, we re-implemented SAS in C. Yeah, it was crazy, and it's mostly this guy, Aaron. Um, yeah, I mean, if I hadn't met Aaron, who is just super ridiculously smart, he works at MoveWeb, loves parsers, loves languages, and when, when I kind of mention this idea, which I think only, if you've ever read the SAS code and you know the edge cases that are covered in there, I mean, it is complex. There's, there's like lists that aren't keywords, which are also arrays that need to be dealt with in like the same way, it's, it's crazy, right? But he really took on the challenge and, well, hopefully you guys will think we did a good job. So here's the main design constraints that we had. Um, so it's a C interface with C++ internals. We weren't cor quite crazy enough to build a full tree in C. Uh, we tried to get this done in about uh, two months. Um, so yeah, C++ internals. Um, it's statically linkable, and also no external libraries. That, that would have made a lot less, it would have been a lot easier if we could like import some nice tree algorithms or something, or an AST or something like that. Nope, statically linkable. Um, it's small-ish. Uh, the main size, it's about 600K if it's a library compiled on my Mac. Um, mostly, w you actually have to keep a list of all the colors. I, I don't even think people know this. Do you guys know that you can add red and blue together and then SAS will compile out to Fuchsia? Like, it actually figures it out and then if you use a color that's a hex code, it'll look up the word. Um, so that takes some size because we have the full list of all the colors plus some extras. Um, Want to have a simple interface, so it's really easy to integrate, and then obviously fast. Um, and then for now, we're doing SAS 3.1 features, uh, not the ones I was talking about 3.2. It, it's just to set a goal, right? It's not out yet, but we're like, okay, <laughs> if we can get this done, it'll be awesome. Um, the development was sponsored by MoveWeb, um, mostly because I said we use it internally a lot, um, and a lot of our tools are now using Go, so we actually wanted to, on our production servers, not have to have Ruby installed. Um, but, I mean, it was just like, why isn't this possible also, right? We should be able to do this. Um, 
Yeah, so we're about two months. That's less than, should be greater than, just a little over two months in. Uh, I, we actually got a lot more done than I thought. A lot more edge cases are covered. Um, and then the big thing is working on adapters, and I'll get into to that in a minute. So here's the stuff that is pretty much completely covered. Mix-ins just work. Any way you use mix-ins. Uh, variables are good. Most unit conversions, that's more I'm scared that there's crazy units we missed. That's all. Um, I'm trying to read through the code on that, but you know. Um, simple interpolation, there are some edge cases that don't work. Um, most functions, uh, color functions. If anybody loves color math, please help. Um, and then honestly, it's every, besides the color functions, uh, it's everything I use personally is currently working. So when I just go start writing, it just, it does what I do. Um, there's stuff that it doesn't do yet where uh, selector inheritance is coming probably in the, this is a release which I'm hoping to do next Monday. Um, so Aaron right now as I'm doing this is currently coding on making sure that this works correctly. Uh, full interpretation with all uh, edge units and then hopefully we'll have gone through and just double checked we have all the units. Oh, it's all the normal units. But I don't know, do you guys know you can do crazy unit math and conversions and stuff in SAS? I don't know if people do it, but you probably don't even notice when you're using a library, right? Your mix-in can use certain uh, settings and then it doesn't matter what you pass in. Anyhow. Um, and then after that, obviously, color functions, uh, control directives, and then a callback API. The callback API is pretty big because you can implement functions in Ruby right now. And basically, we want, to we want any host environment to be able to mimic that, where you can actually go into whatever language you're using and just go write a, you know, in that language, go write a, a callback function. Um, I'm sorry, call a function in SAS will eventually get routed to that language. Um, there's the benchmarks. I had trouble uh, <laughs> making it clear, but there is a green line to the right of it. Um, yeah, anyhow, it's pretty fast. Um, it's roughly, this is the worst case number. This is out of our projects we've been compiling. This is the worst case number of speed improvement. Um, yeah, so, uh, and the best case, when we do one big file and it's super nested, a, a lot of this is I.O. kind of limits it. Both languages are having to wait for the operating system to read a file, right? So lots of files, lots of I.O. Um, but it's about 10,000 times faster, no, percent, not times, whoa. Um, 10,000 percent faster if you do like one big file where I.O. isn't really the thing and it's more calculations and stuff. Um, all right, so libsass is, is kind of inert itself. It's built in the tradition of a proper library. Like, you can compile it, but it's just a library file. It doesn't do anything. Um, so sassy, it's a good name, right? Sassy, yeah, yeah, I like it. Um, so, and generally, sometimes well, I'll find myself, we refer to the overall project as sassy, but like really strictly, there's, there are two different things. So libsass is basically the internals when you build sassy. Sassy is an executable project um, and we don't, it's not perfect yet, we're, we're quickly trying to add, um, like we've been working on the library so much that only in the last two days we're like, oh shit, we should probably write the wrappers now. Um, so it kind of works in this form where you kind of run it, it, pass in a file name and then it'll pipe out the results. But we're gonna, you know, it's just you have to go into C and just write the stupid code, right? But you can pipe in, you can do all the normal stuff we can do with a command line SAS. Um, and this is how we ran the test, by the way. We, so it was actually starting up a process. Um, and Ruby, we didn't require to do that. So it was a little bit of a cheat. Or, well, cheat in that it helped Ruby. Um, but yeah, this is the way we, we ran the test. But the real plan for this thing is this. SAS Ruby, uh, which is a real project um, that I've been working on, um, wraps around libsass. It uses Ruby FFI, rate compiler. Looks just like Nokugiri. You install it, says compiling, and then you're done. Um, so it's, I didn't upload to the gym server yet because it works on my computer, but I know with these native gyms, I didn't want to look like a fool if everybody's like, holy shit, doesn't install. So give me a couple of days on that. We'll be tweeting that. Um, but the repo's there. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're just wrapping libsass, right? Libsass is just the guts. It's just the logic. Um, but I really want SAS Python and SAS JS. I mean, I, I'm not going to probably work on that. I don't know about those languages. I don't really want to know about them necessarily. <laughs> that sounded really catty, didn't it? Um, yeah, but like, I, I want people to go build this. I mean, we can do it with J and I. I don't know. People in Eclipse land, like, why can't they enjoy what we have, right? Like, that's, that's what I really want. I want it to be that it's just part of your normal tool chain. So, I mean, there's more. SAS whatever language, I don't care. Oh, SAS Go is another one. I'm, I mean, I'll, I'll be releasing that one soon. Um, I'm just going to be really quick about the C API. I know, 
Uh, it's really simple, though, and I think that's what I'm trying to prove, that even if you don't really know C uh, that well, you'll be like, oh, that makes sense. Um, so this is basically, oh, that red doesn't work, does it? Um, this is kind of a mangled version of um, what SAS C does. Uh, but all you have to do is build a context object called SAS new context. You have it. It's a struct. Uh, you set the input string on it. Then you can set the output style. And then you run compile. And then the context object has errors, and it also has normal other stuff that you'd be looking at. This would break in an error case. I think you'd just print out nothing. Um, but this would print out the output, and then you, it's C, so you need to free the context. That's, that is the API. It's very, very dumb. And we wanted it to be dumb, because uh, you know, integration should be easy. Um, and then just really quickly, these are the um, structs. Wow, I'm going fast. I know. Um, I hope you guys have some questions. <laughs> uh, SAS options, uh, that's like a shared object. Uh, right now, we only have two things in it, but include paths is important. You'd probably put the directory you're in, even, uh, wherever your SAS files are, plus compass and load path and all that. Um, and then this is, you see SAS options is part of this context, and this context is particularly for strings. So we do input string, output string, error status, and error messages. It's pretty simple. We have two other contexts. You don't have to pay that much attention. But I mean, there's a file one where you just pass it a file name, and plus mostly the same options. The other one's a folder, which is the way that kind of Rails works, where you, you know, subfolders. We want to. It's actually search path instead of input path. Um, so we go find all the files, compile them, keep them all in memory at once, so that we're not having to like, you know, we can just focus on the output files a little more efficient. But you know, you can you can do it all with strings if you're writing an adapter library. We don't really care. You can handle it. We don't, Really, it's fast enough. We don't care. Um, but yeah, and like the question is why, right? Like, is it like, oh, let's get out of Ruby because Ruby is whatever? No, it's not. This is about like I truly believe SAS is awesome. Like I've made a lot of things in my life, right? You know, like well, I'll go Hamel. I still love Hamel. I use Hamel. I'll never stop using Hamel. I built it for myself, you know. And I'm happy other people like it. People come up to me and they're like, well, you know. Why, I, I, you know, Hamel, I don't really like Hamel. I'm like, good. I mean, I don't know. I, I do. I mean, and it's fine. I mean, I, I don't, it doesn't hurt my feelings. You know, people seem guilty about this. Oh, I don't really use Hamel. I'm like, I don't, yeah, and? I, it's not a big deal. Because honestly, I, it was something for me. And SAS started that way, but it's become something different. Like when I see designers and people using CSS, and then they, like the dumb, the stupid thing, you can nest, like, they're like, what? Oh, obviously you should have, right? Like, I'm still surprised. I can't, as far as I can tell, anywhere on the internet, this was the first time anybody thought to nest CSS. Really? Or at least that they ever even proposed it. I, nobody's even pointed out a thing like that. Like, that's such a dumb, obvious idea. And like, you know, Les is doing their thing, and they're kind of going for the node crowd or whatever, right? But like, I'm thinking about all the people in corporate offices doing design, right? And they're having to work in a build environment they didn't choose and they don't even like, right? Why can't we bring that to them? You know, SAS came out of the joy that I got doing Rails. You know, that, that freedom, that as you learn, you become like a ninja, right? You don't feel strapped down by the environment. You, you learn a new thing you can do, and you just refactored your code. It's more beautiful, right? That's, that's that power. That's, I mean, at least that's why I'm here. I mean, that's why I love Rails. And, and I think SAS has some of that, especially, less for me, because I don't spend all day doing CSS. But when I see designers who work for me, and they're, you know, first of all, like, oh, I have to learn something. And they're like, no, no. This, and this is the trick with SCSS. This is why it was so successful. It's like, no, no, you can just keep doing everything you normally do. Don't change anything. Try putting a variable in. And they're just like, what? <laughs> like, and it worked magically? Um, so I really, I really want to bring this out to people. I really want to bring this to the world. Um, I'm kind of, and part of it is the competitors. Yeah, I'm going to keep the competitors. I don't really feel like there's a lot of edge cases they miss. And it's, I mean, Stylus and Less and a whole bunch of other ones that are out there that aren't as popular. Um, you know, they're either really flimsy or they kind of, like, just like the number of open issues on less, like, and the re response to most of them are just like, uh, like, oh, sorry, yeah, it doesn't do that. It's supposed to be small, right? But, like, why can't we bring a really powerful, full-featured environment to designers with every, like, full-out software development? Why can't design be that, right? And that's the mission I'm on. And that's which I know. That's I, I think that's Chris's on his blog. It's like he's like making web design, like or have all the same tools as software development. 
right? Just make it a real thing. Get, empower them, and people are happy. It makes them love their job again. Um, so what can you do? Uh, obviously, you guys are Rubyists, so SAS Ruby, try to install it. Give me feedback if it breaks, file good issues, please. Um, if anybody here knows C++ or used to do it and wants to help out with color functions, really appreciate it. Um, evangelize, I mean, that's, and that's why, <laughs> follow me on Twitter, at hcatlin, and retweet, which sounds stupid, but you know, when I, I'm a little worried, like, when we come out with, like, SAS Python, right? Like, most people who follow me are Rubyists, and then we're all like, Mer, Python, <laughs> or whatever, you know, it's the other guys. Um, we're not usually retweeting Python stuff all the time. But, like, if, if people do that, then they'll hear about it, you know? If you just take that one step, somebody who follows you probably does it, right? So then they'll get to find out about this cool thing that came out of the Ruby community. Um, so, yeah, that's, and, and, you know, tell your designers. If you're at a company and the, that first one, they go, oh, I don't want to have to learn something new. And be like, you don't have to. It's okay. Calm down. Um, you know, it works with CSS. CSS is totally valid. Um, anyhow. So here's the linkgasm. I think these are all live. Michael. Yes? All right. So they just went live. So there's libsass, which is the internal library. There's sass c, which is the binary, which I'm trying to get brew going for that so that you can just do brew install sass c. I mean, like, come on. That will be so awesome, right? Um, and then sass ruby, which I really want to get going because think of it like erb versus erubus, right? I mean, obviously, Rails will never include this because it compiles. but you know, and maybe your thing isn't that slow. Why, why not have it, right? Why not give back to uh, the Ruby community with this? Uh, there's my Twitter, at hcatlin. <laughs> Sorry, I never pimp it enough. People are always like, oh, you kind of mumble over your uh, Twitter name. And uh, so I'm trying to do it a lot. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so the Pragmatic Guide to SAS, uh, uh, which I, by the way, is a dream to write for Prag Prog. Like, you know, just such great authors there, such great people. And getting to work with them was amazing, like total lifetime dream. And uh, I got to write the book with my husband, Michael. And uh, uh, yeah, so we have a 25% discount code. Makes a great stocking stuffer for Memorial Day. Is that coming up? Yeah. I don't know. Give it to your, give it to designer friends. It has easy install instructions, you know? Or what I do, like, sometimes it's just like you put on the coffee table at work. You know, people are like, oh, what? Um, anyhow. So it's 30 minutes past now. So I think, obviously, we have some time for some QA. Uh, please don't beat me up about Hamel. I don't care if you don't like it. But any other question? <laughs> yeah. No, you actually can. I will if somebody wants to discuss it. Um, questions? Oh, yes, lady back there. Hmm. <laughs> I know, right? <sighs> I'm glad you like Hamel. So the question was, uh, uh, besides uh, Hamel's awesome, um, the, the question was, uh, what was the, like, what tool chains do the designers at MoveWeb use? Uh, I mean, without getting into too many specifics, we have our own. Um, so, I mean, that's kind of what we're doing. It is a platform, I think I can say that much. Um, so, it's kind of tightly integrated into it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, that is kind of one of the downsides right now is that if you're not doing Rails, if it's not a Rails project, it's easy. Drop it in this folder, it builds, you don't have to think, right? But yeah, no, I mean, and, and this is actually one of the reasons behind this is there, like, there's Scout app, which can compile stuff for you if you don't like the command line. But yeah, I mean, there aren't a lot of tools that integrate. And, you know, yeah, like I was saying, you know, Ruby's installed on Macs, and that does make that easy, so that's good. But, you know, Windows things, what about commercial applications? You know, I mean, I, my life will be changed the moment that a commercial application comes out, like whatever, Dreamweaver or something, right? And there's just save as SCSS. Like, that would just, right? I mean, come on, Ruby. Like, Ruby people, we, this is our thing, and it's in your world now. Um, that's what I want, and so that's, I mean, it's exactly, it's like, oh, you play with it, oh, that was cool, but it, it doesn't work in whatever, I mean, I'm curious what tool, or without you giving away anything, like, what tool set do you, do you guys, or did they primarily use?
Mm. Oh, so, you, but you mean like text editor and IDE kind of thing? Oh, so we use uh, Sublime and TextMate. I think are the two. Mm. Yeah, I mean, well, Vim has highlighting. It's, uh, Emacs has highlighting, TextMate, and then everything that supports TextMate does. Um, yeah, so but we're mostly using TextMate and Sublime, I think, are the two most popular. And Vim, if you want to show off, is mostly, <laughs> mostly the way it works in the office. Um, it's true. No, I'm sorry, not to. I just totally insulted every Vim person here, including you. I'm sorry. <laughs> Vim, it, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yeah. <laughs> No, but because it does look cool, right? It's like, I never left. Still the terminal. Um, uh, I think it's kind of cool. I'm like, I can like do the simple commands like W, Q, and edit a file, and I feel cool enough doing that. And then I see like pains and I don't know. If I get a pain, if one appears on Vim, I've done something terribly wrong and need to quit right now. I'm like, whoa, I don't know what I just did. Um, yeah, Vim, or as I like to call it, oops, I forgot to hit I. I don't know if anybody else has that. Uh, yeah, so, sorry. Uh, other questions? Doctor. Mm. So it's gonna be, I, I mean, my plan is that it is, um, so SAS is gonna remain, especially with Rails, SAS gem, the normal SAS gem is going to remain as it is, and it will continue to probably be the place where most language changes come in. Um, so that will continue. So it's things like ERB and eRubis, right? And especially because Rails has a rule, which makes sense, no compiled gems are by default, because you don't want to have to have a whole build environment just to install it. Um, so I think the gem is going to be called SAS C, just because I do just like the name, right? Um, the project SAS Ruby, is that dumb? I think that's dumb. <laughs> I don't know. Seems dumb to know Jim Sass Ruby. You're in Ruby. You're like, I know it's Ruby. Um, the important part is the C part. Um, yeah, so they'll both continue. So, I mean, personally, in my Rails applications, I mean, it, it, you know, I, I'm going to start putting this in as a like personal, I'm compiling anyway. So, you know, and I want to make stuff a little. Yeah, I, that was the first name of it. And then it was, I. You guys want to hear all the details of the thought process on this? No, yeah, so that was my first version. And then it was like libsass Ruby, and I'm like, uh, it's not so. But the thing is, I want like sass Python, sass JS. And so I'm like, I can't say that that naming convention that I want to see in other languages, we don't do in Ruby. So I was like, it was either sass Ruby or sass RB. But should I do like a Twitter poll? Uh, decisions by committee and groupthink. That's the best decisions ever. Um, yeah, so. I don't, wait, which one do you like? I like the fourth. Yeah, the 4,000, I know. So do you have a s slow, uh, oh, sorry, I should really be repeating one. He likes a 4,000%, they're recording this. This is a one-sided conversation with an Australian. Um, so, sorry. so yeah, you like the 4,000%. Um, yeah, me too. Is there gonna be a Windows gem? I, hopefully, I mean, I'm using rate compile, which is supposed to do cross-compiling. Uh, I did a lot of the work on the flight without internet, so I was just reading source code trying to figure out how it worked, and I'm not a build expert, so it was, I'm just glad I got it building on my machine. Um, but I'm sure there are people, experts in here, who one little patch would solve that. Um, but yeah, I would love it to run on Windows with, with SAS Ruby. I mean, that's, there's no reason it can't compile on Windows. I mean, we haven't, there might be some, I mean, we haven't done it, but we're not using any external libraries. We're only using the most base CSS, uh, C++ and C library. I mean, bare, standard libraries, just the most standard. Um, all right, anybody else? No, I thought there were more hands. Did everybody get shy all of a sudden? There we go. No. No indented. I'm sorry. I know, and that was the that was my idea. I mean, I still like it. I'm not. It's, it's the, in a way, the struggle for me is I, I like indented a lot. I think it looks really clean. And it was actually funny, Michael, when we were writing the book, he's like, we should do this in indented. I think it looks better. And he's not a, he's not, he wasn't a programmer. He learned all of this to write the book, <laughs> which is, yeah. Dropped out of his biology PhD, and then, like, Prague Prague asked if we wanted to write the book. And then uh, uh, 
yeah, we were like, I was like, I don't have the time to do it. And he's like, I'll do it. And I was like, yeah, all right, I'll help. Um, yeah, so anyhow, uh, so I think a lot of people who don't do CSS, I do think it's easier to understand like traditional SAS. I do. Um, but I think the real realization for me is that <laughs> like sometimes it's not about, it's not, I mostly go off what I like is what I'm going to go with. But I think this is one where I just have to go, you know, if every CSS person out there, I want them to have a just no friction moment coming in. Like you don't, if your developer turns on, on SAS, you can, you can just keep writing CSS. You didn't get, you don't feel that you have to learn something new. And so it's, it's only about the human element on this and the kind of that moment that we can give. Um, however, I am pushing, I don't know if, it, um, Nathan and I disagree on, uh, I really, the plus syntax for mix-ins uh, and equal probably, um, I really, really want brought into SCSS because the add includes and all that, the original, one of the original ideas with SCSS was kind of, okay, if we make this thing awesome, the W3C might go, Psh, that, you did it exactly. The, so it's actually kind of designed to please what they might do. So it's like, oh, they would like at rules because that's what they do. So we should have at rules. Um, and that's, there's a fair point. It's also more similar to CSS. But um, I just, yeah, so in case people don't know, you can do at includes for mixin, but then in, in SAS, traditional SAS, it's just plus the name. So it looks nice to me because it almost, um, it looks like you're kind of appending. You know, you're just like, oh, add some selectors here, this. You know, and that I think it just looks so clean. Um, and I hate typing out at include and it just, bugs me. Um, so we'll see. Maybe Libs uh, supports that secretly. I didn't, I didn't say that. Um, yeah, uh, anything else? What time do I have? Oh, we have a couple, of, probably time for one or two more questions, if there's anybody actually with questions or if I'm just, oh, way in the back sitting. Yeah, you better yell. Yeah, scream. Ah! Hmm. Uh, if you want to dig into libsass, yes. I mean, that isn't in the C interface right now. Um, but I mean, there is, if you look at the C driver file, it basically just kind of pull, pushes away all the error handling and stuff so that it's all kind of clean. And uh, But yeah, you could, if you want to integrate straight in with the C++ stuff, that'd be the way to do it. Um, at current, to get it done, it doesn't have a full AST tree all the time. The output, it kind of is half streaming, um, which I think we're going to be changing. But the whole point is that that can change, and then the C API that most adapters will use, it doesn't really matter, right? It's the same as far as you can tell. Whatever happens inside is what happens inside. But no, I mean, yeah, passing in data. Oh, right, sorry, I'm, I keep forgetting to repeat the question. I'm looking at you, camera. So what if you wanted to pass in a data structure into SAS instead of read on a file. And yes, you're welcome uh, to brave the internals. Um, yeah. All right, one more. Come on. Somebody's got one more question for me. And then don't, don't just make up something. Oh, right there. Are you serious with the discount code? I'm very serious with the discount code. And it is misspelled. I know it has all caps. Is that the? Yeah, so that came from the editor. She sent that to us. And I didn't notice it till I put it on there. And then I was like, shit. Yeah, it's all caps on that, but that is incorrect. Um, yeah, RailsConf, Catlin, SAS 2012. Um, I should probably tweet that. Well, she didn't say not to. Anyhow, uh, all right, that's a great question because that's available at pragmaticprogrammers.com or Amazon, but the code doesn't work at Amazon, so go to PragProg. Um, they're awesome, and the book is amazing. It's for beginners, though, by the way. So, th sorry, there is some advanced stuff covered, but it's pretty much for beginners. Okay, wait, one more question. Yes? Oh, yeah, sorry, I probably should mention that a little bit. So basically, is, as far as when they see something monolithic and external, they're out. They're not interested. I mean, it was like, it's like talking to deaf people about it. Um, they don't even want to look. Um, but Chris has been working really hard. I mean, my god, that guy is a trooper. Um, being on the forums that the W3C uses for these proposals, just 
answering questions and debating with people and just, so there is a proposal, I meant to have the link for it, that is, I think, accepted-ish for CSS three or four, whichever, I don't know where it's gonna fall, but for nesting. So nesting is going into CSS, which um, I just like to think that I made that happen uh, all by myself, but yeah, it's good. So the first thing I really wanted is, is in. So uh, yeah, if they'd done that earlier, I wouldn't have had to do all this work. Um, anyhow, uh, so that's a discount code. Uh, I'm Hampton, feel free to come talk to me. Of course, MoveWeb is hiring and I do have cards because that's what we do. Um, yeah, so everybody have a great day. Thanks for coming. Thank <laughs> you.